Okay, everyone, welcome back to Sabada Sessions Podcast. I'm your host, Joey. Got my boy, Jurians and Alex Espin on. And today, our very special guest is none other than the IPF president, Gaston Paraj. Welcome, sir. Uh, happy to have you on. And I'm so ple- it's a pleasure to have you on as well. Uh, first of all, how have you been? How's, uh, how's the life going on? I'm sure you've, it's been busy. Yes, uh, first of all, hello to everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be on this podcast. And thank you for the invitation. Yeah, it is a busy time for me, especially in August now and in September, I have traveled a lot. Uh, I was traveling to several regions because it's very important that also our regions uh, uh, working very well. And I want to have all the region on one level. Mm. Uh, so there is a lot of work to do to bring them all up in the, uh, to the same level as the Europeans. Yes, yes. Um, European, Europe being your home base, is it is it your favorite? Yes, of course. I'm living in Luxembourg. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it's a small, it's a small country, but not that small as, but small enough that uh, you do not uh, sit hours in the car to drive to the office or oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, uh, well, obviously, we were talking just before the recording started, but you did mention you were also going to come to the Arnold's in Birmingham. Yes, uh, I, last year I couldn't come because I was busy and I saw how many crowds was there and uh, so it is very important to for make advertisement for our sport to be mm-hmm. at the Arnold's and at the same time also to give a chance for some lifters uh, who take part to make, uh, or, or even if it is not that big money, but some money uh, they can earn uh, at Arnold's. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, yeah, so I mentioned the uh, Arnold's because obviously there's a relationship uh, with IPF as a as a powerlifting federation, and you know there's uh, partnerships with SPD, there's partnerships with uh, the Arnold Sports Festival. How 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 did this uh, partnership come about? Like, did you was it part of your um, intentions when you you know you became the IPF president to yeah. yes. Yes, uh, for sure, because I had every time in my head that we also uh, must do something or try to do something that some of our best lifters becoming stars, uh, because I think uh, sport is living over stars and uh, more famous a lifter is, so much more people will watch competitions. And so that was one of our, my main goal. And then, of course, to make also something that the lifter can, uh, our best lifters who working very hard uh, week by week and day by day, because I know that they uh, training five to six uh, times uh, per week. And that's a really hard job, uh, more hard than most of people having jobs. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. then I was thinking it could be good also that people get a chance to earn uh, some money. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. I mean, that's a, to, to just add there is another opportunity as well, isn't it, to advertise the sport? Because in the Arnold Festival, we have pretty much a variety of the sport. Having powerlifting in there, it gives us the advertisement that we actually uh, need and deserve, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that was the main reason uh, uh, to advertise the sport over the Arnolds. In the beginning, I was not uh, uh, so much in favor uh, with the Arnolds because I have uh, focused more to our world championship and the regional. But then uh, I saw that it is very important to have the Arnolds as well to make uh, advertisement for our sport. When I saw how many people coming to the Arnolds uh, are there, and uh, watching uh, uh, the sport as well. Uh, but I must say that, uh, except in USA, uh, in Spain, we have also had enough people, but not that much as we had last year in UK. And mm-hmm. uh, that is uh, one of the reasons I said I will come this year also there to uh, make my own uh, opinion about it and to see the crowd there. That's great. That's brilliant. We're going we're gonna to actually rewind uh, back a little bit obviously you said before you were against the arnolds and i'm pretty sure you were against that the sort of uh money competitions like way back when where where did you see the biggest challenge i mean you've been you've been a president you've had a long tenure as the ipf president but what what times or what years do you remember were the biggest challenges of be of being in your role as as yeah as the president of the IPF. Um, uh, uh, as you know or may not know, I used to, uh, the 
IPM exit could leave sign where I have been elected as treasurer. And so I was the treasurer until 2012. So the time when I was the treasurer, uh, I have focused more uh, and the championship secretary uh, and I still also the championship secretary. So I was uh, more focused on our world championships on our regional and therefore uh, I did not focus so much on the Arnolds because that was not the priority. Mm -hmm. The priority was first to make sure we get a lot of people to the worlds and to the regional championships. And after when I saw that it is a good advertisement, uh, when I became the president and I went myself the first time to an Arnolds, then I saw that it is a very good uh, advertisement for our sport. Uh, and uh, then uh, I changed my mentality uh, of this. How long ago was your, when you first witnessed uh, the Arnolds? I do not remember when, but I think it was 2012 in November. I has been elected president. 2013, I went then to the Arnolds in Ohio. Oh, and, okay. that's, yeah. that's a big one. Um, yeah. Me, uh, Gaston, just just in case, in terms of like um, yourself, when you say you were focusing more focusing more on the championship, getting people to the world championship. So, would you say what would you say? powerlifting has come very far from before when you were president to where we are. So how, how that change has affected you as well as a president of the IPF? Uh, let me say I have changed the IPF as president because uh, uh, when I was uh, before in the executive committee, we had a lot of presidents, but there was uh, all done by email, uh, this sending emails to people, do this, do that, and here and there, but it was not working. And mm -hmm. uh, I have had a work where I was a leader, team leader, and I know how to uh, move people to work. So, mm -hmm. and my thing is more take the phone on the hand and talk to the people and say, hey, Robert or whoever I'm talking mm -hmm. with, uh, we must do this, that must do uh, working so and so. We had a lot of commissions, but the commissions was not working. So I start then also to make a, a conference, a online conference with the people uh, to make them working. So that was the way uh, how I see that you can move people forward because often the people self maybe do not know exactly what to do, but having then somebody who leads or like mm. Robert Keller say every mm. time you are the engine of the IPF, to tell the people, okay, we have to do this and this. I think we should do it like this and this, this. Then you give ideas to the people. And when the people have ideas, then of course they can also work. In. And uh, so uh, the, the, the IPF was growing and also for membership, uh, that has more to do that we have make uh, um, uh, streamings because I said uh, to the EC, if the people not coming to our championships, then we must bring our sport to them. Mm -hmm. And bringing the sport to them means like uh, our streamings. So we started with our streamings and we had a good success with this. And now since last year that we have been involved Eurosport. So we had the first time 6 million of viewers at the TV and 12 millions on their streaming. So that wow. was for the first time that, that was amazing. So and uh, now yeah, last... Yeah, and now at the last championship in uh, Sun City, we had again, I think, about 12 or 13 million of people watching our sport uh, over Eurosport. And, 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 and uh, yeah, and a nice story when I came back, uh, I had a control in Germany. Uh, they have found something on my luggage. It was a small battery in my map. Uh, so they didn't know what it is, and then they called the police and checked everything. <laughs> so and in that in that time, the policeman spoke with me, and then he said, "Where are you from? Oh, yeah, I'm from Luxembourg. I'm the president from powerlifting. Ah, powerlifting! I just uh, watched yesterday on Eurosport powerlifting. Oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, <laughs> that, I think god. again, what we could probably say, um, um, Gaston, these are the story." we should sell, these are the story we should bring out there because this is the one that was going to get our sport on the map. Yes. You know? That's another way to advertise this sport. And again, congratulations on the, um, on the streaming on the Eurosport. And I mean, myself, I have got family abroad. Everyone literally like, enjoyed watching in Sun City when I was lifting yeah. because they could have the opportunity to do that rather than sending them video later. So thank you yeah. for that. And on my following question on that was, as as a president of IPF, how does it make you feel knowing now 
um, in some of the country, the sport of powerlifting is recognized as a sport. For instance, in England here, we are known now like GBPF is a, a power, the only power, powerlifting federation we have in the country. How does it make you guys feel on those type of success? But I think that makes me feel very well because that it's one of my goals that uh, we're doing everything to be IOC recognized. It is a hard work. We have done a lot of work. We have done also what we have been requested to do. And as you can see on our webpage, uh, all what we have installed, it's all things what has been requested by the IOC. And uh, of course, uh, now we're doing more and more and still we never give up. Eurosport is surely also a very good step for that, for the IOC recognition. Uh, and more popular our sport becomes, more uh, the chance will be bigger to be recognized. And I'm very happy and I say every time to the people, uh, to uh, work also with the universities because now, uh, for example, we are uh, recognized by the FISU. And mm -hmm. the FISU was also a story. When I went to the IOC for the IOC recognition, they said, you must be first FISU recognized. Then I went to the FISU. The FISU said, you must first be IOC recognized. I said, how should that work? Yeah, one say this, that's this. confusing. <laughs> yeah, and and then of course uh, when my tie became a FISU recognized before they got the recognition of IOC, then I said, okay, what they can do, we can do as well. And yeah. I conducted the secretary general. He's from Belgium. I was sympathetic to him. He was sympathetic to me. And I said, listen, we want the IOC uh, a FISU recognized. Uh, uh, is there a possible? Yeah, of course, of course. And we came direct and then uh, <laughs> reached that goal. So I was very happy that we reached this goal. Uh, now we have opened the door for our member nation, but uh, I know in UK you're working very well also with universities, but uh, you must, I must every time push the people. So mm. I have opened the door, you just need to go inside. But yeah. You must push the people uh, yeah. every time. <laughs> this is the problem. Uh, and that yeah. is uh, really difficult for me because it gives me much more work to do, mm. but I do it because I know it is necessary to do it. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I'm working about 19 hours per day for just for the power lifting. Uh, somebody called me, I answer. Somebody sent me an email. Two minutes later, he has an answer uh, because otherwise you would forget if you let all uh, by side. Yeah. Uh, so, and the people know that, that I'm a very hardworking person and an acting president. And I, uh, my goal was never to become the president. Uh, oh, I, you, I just, you. yeah. You are the president now, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that you mentioned that the hard work you've put in. And along with that, obviously, not a lot of people have been exposed to how much work you've put in. And in, in, in saying that, obviously, you're on the forefront of a lot of criticisms along the way. And uh, some, some of the criticisms come along the sides, come along the lines of, you know, uh, people comparing the IPF, taking the same route as the I IWF before they had to do a whole change. And what what do you say to that kind of criticism? Like when they make comparisons with a different sport entirely, or even compare the IPF and then the legitimacy you've created to yeah. like other federations, like, I don't know, like uh, GPC or USAPL, like what? How, how do you react to those um, criticisms um, from others? But to be honest, I do not uh, read too much criticism and I do not answer on it because often the people who do that have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and it is easy, it is easy to uh, make a shitstorm about something and you do not know how sport works. Uh, uh, you do not know what a person like me do because I do not know if these people who criticize me would offer 19 hours per day without any salary because I'm doing this uh, freelance. I get not paid. Nobody in the IPF executive get paid, get a salary. So and that I think should be respected by the people and the most people and the lifters uh, I meet, they respect me very much and they respect the IPF because they see what's going on. Yeah. And everybody who has a little bit uh, a brain can know what is going on because we have all on our webpage, we have our reports there. You can read my report. When you read my report, for example, 2012, when I said we will do this and this and this and this, after four years, I have fulfilled all what I said. 
So what was in the strategic plan? So we have another strategic plan now. And step by step, we start to fulfill what we said. So we're not just writing something and then it's just to write something. No, we will also working on it. We setting our goal ourselves to bring the powerlifting forward. And when I see people criticizing the powerlifting or even talking, uh, I do not want to use the word what I really wanted to say because I'm the president. <laughs> oh, you can, can say it. You can, can say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. You this can is, say it. Whatever you want. Don't this worry. is a very safe podcast. To yeah, just say yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but when I see then these people bringing just uh, untrue stories up mm. and talking about something what they have no idea because first of all the IWF and we are not challenge with the IWF and we not do what the IWF do because we have the water compliance we have the tier one level that's the highest level you reach in the water and mm. not even all not even all the olympic sport have that level so we go our way we do not need an IV, iwf and we do not follow what the iwf do we follow what we have in our head how sport should works and what we need to to bring the sport for ioc recognition mm. this is what we do and all the rest is just uh, when you yeah it's noise and when you're thinking that we try to bring our sport in a good light and these people just in a few seconds we yeah, uh, they they, criticize they are, they're shit I, I yeah. cannot say even criticize this shit storm <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the right wording because they, they, they're talking about things they have no idea Mm, that was yeah. so when we had a problem with the Australians, that was so with the USAPL. Mm. But at the end, we have never lost any case, not on the court in Luxembourg, not on the court in uh, uh, Lausanne. So then it means these people was just wrong. Listen to one person and psht, go it forward. And often yeah, they, just, what usually, do you say, Gast yeah, yeah, what usually do you say, just Gaston? Hearsay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what much. do you say, Gaston? I do not answer because that's oil on the fire and then they will bring more. Uh, shitstorm mm, of and course. that makes no sense. Yeah. I don't mm. wasting my time for that. On the it's crazy. The... It, yeah, sorry, it's, it's actually crazy because like, you, and you said you work so many hours. That's seventeen, eighteen hours, but it's all freelance. So yeah, and I, I talking. So yeah, I talk. I talk with Australians before they go sleep. They waking up, and I still awake, and I talk Whoa. with them again. Yeah. Okay, so, so it makes it makes sense. Like the yeah. actual hours you do. Exactly. Because people don't see that. No. A lot of people don't see that. That's the thing. A lot of people don't actually see how much behind the scenes there is, like that you do behind the work. Exactly. Sorry. So it's like exactly. a lot of us. And, and there therefore I say. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. Uh, and therefore I say it, it makes no sense that I talk to these people. They have no idea what's going mm. on. So I, yeah, I am course, every time. I am every time willing to talk. I talk in now with you guys because mm -hmm. you asking question, I answer. I have been now in uh, Istanbul. I sitting there because four o'clock my plane was going, so I did not go in sleep. The whole Irish people was there. Some of these come to me, had some question. I discussed and I explained they, that why we cannot have a woman cut three plus ninety, and I explained them why. And then, ah, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. So, and that is what I want. If somebody wants a discussion or know something, you can ask me a question. If it is in a proper way, in a respectful way. Of course. Then I am course, willing course. to yeah. talk with everybody, but just no, talking. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Do you, I can... do, you, do you have access to um, the IPF Instagram page, first one? I self has also I, I can see what's going on, but I self cannot you, post anything. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. can you see all the comments that people send to the page, to the Instagram page, that yeah, direct that, messages that, and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I can see, but I not answer on get, it. I not jump on it. <laughs> do you, like, on on a day to day basis, do you get like a lot of criticism, like a lot of messages and yeah. like, a lot of hate messages as well? Yeah, and that is that is the point. What I hate, I hate people who do hate messages and not respect what the person do for this sport mm. because everybody see how fast now the sport growing up uh, what i have done for this sport and there is people i met some people from zimbabwe they came the first time to an african championship and the guy told me ah just now you are a hero I said, how, <laughs> how you know i am because he following up he read the reports he see what i have done and others yeah. just sending hates but do not know what the president mm. is doing and on the right. other hand the president makes not decisions alone mm -hmm. so we for example now the bench press rule when we discuss the bench press rule i told the 
the, the people in my commissions, that's the lifters commission, the coach commission, the women's commission. So we must do a change in the rule because we get a lot of, we get also from other people bad comments when our sport looks not good. When we have people who do not push anything and then the people outside of our sport, what is this for a sport? I can do that as well. <laughs> so they should, re they should read that message instead to give hates <laughs> to me. I do not tell the people you must push like this, like this, but I see also when it is something interesting for the sport or not. And I see it from a neutral view and mm -hmm. not from a lifter who do not push a lot and is maybe angry that now he must push something. Yeah. But a bench press is a bench press and it is not to bring up the chest against the bar what is already a mistake by rules, but then the referee still give white lights and that's the other mm -hmm. problem. Gaston, Gaston, I'm so, so happy you brought up the bench press rule because obviously this is the big, big topic right now. Um, but I do, even though I know you said you don't want to go into the details of what the actual changes are, I did want to want to know where where did the, the most influence, uh, I would say, the, to the change come from? Was it internal or was it external? Or like, was it something I... that's always been in the plan? Because it's getting ridiculous when people have yeah. been, I, I don't want to say exploit the, the current rules, but, you know, like just, you know, considering it's still within the current rules, they're, they're using yeah. it to their advantage. Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, first of all, when I started in powerlifting uh, in 1986, mm -hmm. we had a, a bench press, people was, were lying flat, everybody did this bench press, we had never any complaint. So then we had congresses where the member nations brought up rules. Ah, we must change this and this and this. And then it comes out that people who are making a bridge, that the rule has been changed, that they get an advantage. And at the Congress, everybody, yes, yes, yes. And then the rule was there. And after when the rule was there, then people complained, but this is not more bench press and here and there. That was one of the reasons that I said the rules should be worked out by a rule group and not more in a Congress where a lot of people sitting just voting yes and have not understood maybe the English uh, because we do not have translation. We can mm. uh, not afford that for translating. So then the people just vote and then after you have a rule and then you see, okay, that was not that best change of the rule. So then of course, as I said in the last uh, championship, you give the small finger to somebody and then they take the whole hand. Uh, this, uh, this, this was also this was also on my work uh, when you had a 15 minute breaks. First it was 15 minutes, then the people stayed 20 minutes. At the end it was 30 minutes, and then the boss said, "Now it's over, no more break." Uh, so <laughs> and true. here and here is the same example. You have a bridge. It started uh, more and more, and now in Almaty, what was a great organized championship, there was three lifters, one from Kazakhstan and two from Japan, who not even broke down the bar. They had just the bar heaving up the chest against the bar, and then uh, got three white lights. Uh, but this, I'm sorry to say, I feel that a lot of lifters self, uh, I got a lot of messages from lifters who say, I stop uh, bench press because it makes no more sense. This is not more a bench press. Yeah. So and and I listen over many years, and then there's coming the point where I said, okay, we have to do something. We can't go forward like this. Uh, the last uh, comment I got from my oldest son, who has nothing to do with powerlifting, but who saw then in Instagram that the people laughing over us, and mm -hmm. sent me the message and said, look what the people say. They can also do that. So yeah. uh, and and the people must understand that we cannot go forward like this. We want to be an Olympic sport. We are in Eurosport. What do you think? What a, a guy from Eurosport uh, who make an, uh, uh, who must report the, our sport. Uh, we'll say or we'll see uh, when he see what's going on yeah yeah uh, uh, I, actually i'm gonna i'm gonna you know we're gonna pause a little bit on this bench press rule and go back to you know the accompli accomplishments you've done yeah. with you know get, getting our sport televised and eurosport and everything else is obviously you've partnered you've partnered up with visu you've partnered up you know with the ioc is the plan still to get the sport of powerlifting in the olympics and if so one in what capacity like so is it uh equipped lifting or raw or classic lifting as well or like you know there's also talks of you know the the power thing replacing weightlifting because i know there's been a lot of 
controversy there. I would definitely vote for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. So first question is like, in what capacity would you want powerlifting yeah. if you still plan to be in the uh, uh, the Olympics as a sport? Yeah. First of all, I must say uh, we will be not uh, tomorrow and not after tomorrow at the Olympics because uh, the most important is the IOC recognition. Mm -hmm. So when we are IOC recognized, then we are an Olympic sport, but that means not that you go to the games. Yeah. But this is the advantage and the most important step so that our member nations get all recognized by their National Olympic Committee, by their Ministry of Sport. So that's the main goal. Mm -hmm. So and when we want time there, then maybe we can ask him to be part at the games. But the problem is when you're going to the games, uh, there is uh, weightlifting is a fixed sport. So they mm. have been always into that. But if you as powerlifting uh, would now, let me say the next uh, games are in a country who like powerlifting, they would say, we want to have powerlifting in the program. Yeah, and so I Fran see, France, accept France is next. Yeah, exactly. And they would say, we want to have powerlifting in the program, then we would be in the program. But the next in 28, uh, where it is now in 28, um, uh, but it, I, I think it's I, in uh, Abu Dhabi or something like that. Is it, is it not in America or something like that? Uh, oh, I, I do not. I, I do not know. know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Doesn't, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter where it will be. Uh, if then these people say we do not want powerlifting, then we are again out. So, mm. but we are, for example, in the World Games. When we are looking the World Games, how good that it's organized and uh, you have an opening ceremony you have a closing ceremony it's similar like the world the olympic games as well yeah. uh, ex except it, it's written world games and it's different sports mm -hmm. but the ioc is already uh, more and more also involved uh, with the the uh, iwga is now uh, recognized by the IOC, the IOC president came there and so on. So and there's even more and more now IOC sports who are coming to the games. So that show that these games will become more and more popular as well. Mm -hmm. So then you have to evaluate what would be now the best for us. Yeah. When that time is coming, uh, but I say yeah. that times can take a long time. Mm -hmm. Would it be better to be every time in the World Games, every four years in the World Games, or would it be better maybe one time in the Olympic Games and not in the World Games, and then you, after that one time you will be maybe be out, and then oh, you have nothing at all. I see. Hmm. So okay. this is a thing. This is something what you have to think about as well. So and uh, therefore I say every time. Now, the most important is the IOC recognition. Okay. And after, when we have reached that goal, then we can thinking on the next step, what can be, then we must see, can we still on the World Games when we will be once in the Olympic Games or not? So then this is, but for now, I'm not thinking on that. I'm just thinking what could be the best for our sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 then, and uh, the committee feels the same way. Yeah, when I explain to the people, the people are like you now say, yeah, it's interesting, an interesting thing. Uh, uh, but uh, when the movement is come, uh, I am sure when we get the chance to go to the Olympics, I would surely not say no. Because yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, for, for the lifters, I think this is something special, of course, and that's why uh, whatever athlete is streaming from. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. uh, that is some things what I'm thinking, but uh, we have to see. And then to say now we go with this or with this, that's another point again. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, we have to see, we get now a lot of new lifters coming from nowhere and you coming doing world records. You have never seen them before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially what we witnessed at the yeah. junior. junior uh, yeah. World it was yeah. amazing. So but that it's also something uh, what we have to focus on uh, also with our anti-doping uh, program to make sure that uh, we see that these lifters are serious, that these lifters uh, mm -hmm. not came in from somewhere and taking drugs, that we have mm -hmm. clean lifters, what is our main goal, because mm -hmm. we want also not risk our place at the World Games just because we would have, I can tell you, we had 14 and 50 uh, lifters tested always from 96 in the past uh, World Games, and we had never any positive. So that mm -hmm. was always equipped lifting. So we have to evaluate how it's going all. 
to make sure that we not uh, come and then we get in trouble. Uh, because mm. that's also a risk for us because uh, mm. strength sport is for the people all strength sport and that it's maybe one problem why it is also difficult for us sometimes to be recognized because there was a lot of problems going on in IWF with mm -hmm. the 21 positives they had at the yeah. world championship yeah and then the people say ah another strength sport uh, they know in uh uh, bodybuilding is problems in IWF is problems. Uh, well, we have uh, done over many years a good work. So we was also in 15% uh, in the time, but now we are under 5%. So that shows that we're doing a good job in the fight against stopping. And that is also what the people see. And the people always telling us, yeah, you are a good example as a strength sport for the work what we are doing. Even, would, you, would you say yeah. then, Caston, that because of that, because of the low positive uh, testing outcomes, makes the IPF more legitimate than any other uh, powerlifting sport. federations in the world? Is that yeah. the biggest contributing factor, would you say? Yeah, I think so. Because first of all, uh, we are doing tests because we want the clean sport. Mm -hmm. So we are not uh, doing powerlifting and just doing some tests to do some tests. No, we doing tests over the water and we doing intelligent testing because the intelligent testing is much better than if a federation tells you, ah, we're doing 3,000 tests and from these 3,000 <laughs> tests, it is maybe all children, children, uh, but not focus on, on the lifters you have to focus on and try to blame the IPF and then a lot of shitstorm again from people who have not any idea how the system works with anti-doping. Uh, when uh, the water is bad, uh, the, the CCS is bad, the IOC is bad, the people talking just because they thinking they have invented the wheel for doing doping <laughs> controls. And, and uh, uh, you, you can and then coming with excuses. Yeah, we pay uh, that cost us a lot of money. Yeah, you can doing less tests, but make intelligent just, testing. Just yeah. a, a yes or no, Gaston. Are, yeah. uh, is, that, is that about the USAPL? I think about the people who talk a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, that's, a, that's a fair answer. I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean um, that's the, uh, yeah. this is Brayden. I mean, this is so insightful. Um, I just want to ask you a question, Tim, because I know we mentioned the USAPL. How did it make you feel when they decided to, or when you decided to fire them, you know what I mean? Because I know they would say like, oh, we left, because a lot of people are saying uh, USAP are left by them, themselves. But me, some of the things I heard is like, is the IPF that kicked them out. Man. So I'm sure it was no easy decision. So no. it, how it, did it you first, come up to that? Yeah, first of all, it was over three and a half, yes, ongoing stories. Uh, where we tried always to find solutions. Uh, then it was good for a time. Then again, we started. And uh, of course, uh, when uh, WADA uh, coming up with issues and asking us, we need this and this information, and you're asking them and you don't get it, mm -hmm. then uh, people start thinking, oh, -ho, why they do not forward these informations uh, when the WADA request them? And then, then just say, yeah, I do not... Uh, sent uh, medical information to the IPF president, I do not need medical information because I'm not a doctor and I am not interested on it because I stay totally out of anti-doping matters. So, mm -hmm. but if the WADA requested and all nations sending that, if you're asking a TOA, uh, then it's normal you must forward uh, medical information because how you can grant the TOA from the IPF when you do not give uh, information and when you have then granted themselves an TOA and you have not added the medical information uh, on the water system, then of course the water come and say, how it is possible to get a TOA? Where are the information? We want the medication. We want the uh, we want the information to see if it is uh, right that this person get a TOA. So, and that was then, of course, uh, a pressure what we got from the water and we have to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we tried, of course, we had a lot of information what was missing also from other federation, uh, also from British federation, but we asked them and we got it. So why mm -hmm. we did not get it from them? 
So, uh, yeah. and, and that was then the risk that we lose our tier one level. It was the risk that we get an audit from the, the water. And it is, of course, not normal that uh, 138 members we have, 137 follow the water code, and one nation just say the water is not uh, good. They don't know what to do. Uh, you know, when you as a president mm -hmm. hand over TOAs to people, yeah, that's, that's not normal. No, no, of course yeah. not. Uh, I would never give a TOE to any people. I would not even be involved. So mm -hmm. uh, this is things what is uh, what was wrong. Of course, they telling their stories and want to tell the people that they do all right and we do all wrong. I can just say the CCS uh, from Canada is doing a very well uh, work and it works very well. Uh, we had enough people who have been tested positive, of course, uh, what is not good for us, uh, but what is good for our sport when they are out, because yes. this is what we want. We want to sheet us out from the sport. Of course. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and, you... uh, and that works very well. And that is the most important. The, um, the uh, relationships you have with the different nations, uh, would you say you're quite close with uh, the I would say this, this uh, is it the CEOs or the chairmen of each fed, uh, of each nation's the president, presidents. Yeah. Yeah. The presidents. Yeah. So yeah. like, for example, we have Richard Parker yes. uh, you're, and you're, you have a good relationship with him. So therefore you get what is, like you said, the TOAs anytime it's requested, it's received. Yeah, I think uh, about I did not request it. It was the what I requested. Oh, right. Yes, sent, sorry. Yeah, and we sent uh, the information to Richard Park and say, listen, we need this and this and this. That was missing. That was not that it was voluntarily missing. It was just missing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that our uh, former who was responsible for it uh, has missed something. But in any case, we got it and we put it in and that was fine for the water. But mm -hmm. what is... Um, I have uh, good relations nearly with every nation <laughs> because yeah. I'm a, I'm a person who looking to get in touch with lifters, to get in touch with people, uh, because it is important for me also, not just to be the president, but also having friendship over the world. Uh, and that's why I do all this hard work because I'm always happy when after at the banquet, we can relax and make oh, trust me. I can't, I, can't, I, think, I can't forget the dance move. <laughs> I can yeah, never forget that. Yeah, we all, we all <laughs> saw how much fun you had that stuff. Yeah. Um, um, so, Dustin, if, if, in terms of like, I know uh, we spoke about um, USAP, yeah, we're not going to open that kind of worm again because it is what it is, it's history. Um, I'll go, I'll touch down a bit on Russia. Um, we know what happened with the Russians with the Olympics being banned and all of that, but we still had Russian in powerlifting. How did that decision did not follow what the IOC did for the Russians since we want to be recognized by them? Is not something we could have followed? Yeah, we follow what the IOC recommended. The IOC recommended to uh, not inviting people to uh, world championships, and that is what we did. Uh, uh, the IOC say also, and that is also my opinion, that uh, in the spirit of sport, uh, politics should be out of the sport and of course what is going on in Ukraine uh, mm -hmm. is more a little bit more than just politic uh, but on the other hand there is also a lot of people who uh, has nothing to do uh, with the war uh, you when you uh, punish a federation you punish of course also people who uh, mm -hmm. maybe are against it but they cannot open uh, it clearly because they have problems at home uh, mm -hmm. So, and therefore we followed what the IOC's recommendation, but the IOC president said at the last uh, breakfast that he did that just because he did not want that the politic interfere yeah, uh, of course. In, in it. Yeah, because if the IOC would not do anything, maybe then the politics came up uh, and would make a decision. Of course, what I uh, must criticize is when there is people who are using uh, uh, signs uh, for the war and so Gaston, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, if one day uh, situation will become better, that we have to see what we do with people like this, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, that is in no way acceptable. And uh, so in what... my opinion, yeah. 
what got started? So in terms of like, I know uh, what IOC has done and I know where the, the, your decision is coming from in terms of doing stuff on nation. So we're not just talking about, we're not picking on Russia here because the situation here is Russia. That's what we're talking about, Russia. It could be any other nation, right? Yeah, it could be yeah, Britain yeah. one day. And yeah, or still, yeah, France. or whatever. So yeah. um, what I'm, I'm asking is, as IPF, as a federation, what are we doing for these lifted that can't make these events? Because at the end of the day, as you mentioned there, the lift has got nothing to do with yeah. what's happening. They're the individual that work hard. You see, like you said in the beginning, they train really hard. So as a federation, what are we doing for them? Is there, do we have some sort of like, we have a door open for them to reach out, we talk to them and all, basically just to keep them in the spirit of the sport. What, is there any plan there for them? At the moment, there's no plan because uh, they are doing their life sometimes self difficult. Uh, when uh, now there was on Instagram a post with these emblems from the war and the IPF logo was there, then I contacted them. I said, Listen, we do not want to have our logo together with logos from the war. Whoa. Uh, yeah. So uh, then they took the logo off. So mm -hmm. then I sent him a message back and I said, this is the wrong message. You mm -hmm. should have taken off the logos from the war and not the logo from the IPF. Oh, so, right. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, so that is what I discussed with them. Uh, and it is then difficult if you should thinking when we can bring them back. And on the other hand, they making mistakes like that. Because from the Ukrainian side, they say, of course, yeah, you see, they're supporting the war. The president is not even uh, telling them that it's not mm -hmm. acceptable and so on. And, and this is a problem. When you talk then to the Russians, they give you another view. Of course, uh, uh, I defend them every time, of course, the Ukrainians. And uh, when they say, yeah, but they're shooting out uh, on our uh, land uh, to the people and I said yeah but you occupied the Ukraine and not the Ukraine the Russian side so uh, yeah. uh, we not yeah. need discuss this uh, I say then yeah. uh, uh, but I, I defend that because I cannot accept I cannot accept any war nowhere yeah. on the world and of yeah. course not accepting when civilizations get uh, killed children get yeah. killed and so on what they are doing this is not yeah. a, but we must not put all in one place yes, yeah of course yeah. Yeah. and and the ukrainians of course they say yeah but they not even sending us a message uh, and say apologize what's going on in uh, with the russian and so on and uh, i think there is a lot of people who not send any message uh, yeah. that is what yeah. the ukrainian expect, expect from them as friends mm -hmm. they should say that like mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. we we uh, going to our friends and we say we are very sorry what's going on are we mm -hmm. supporting them also we have uh, put in a Ukraine found and helping mm. them to show that we stay with uh, them. Mm. And it is difficult for, for me to say now when they criticize the Russians, because uh, I understand on one side, when you are living in a country, you get bombs that then, of course, the people start hate each other. Yeah. And, and, mm. and more mm. the people jumping on it, more the hates become from both sides. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. just uh, makes it worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But I that agree. should that should be something what should not be in the sport. Uh, that mm -hmm. is what the sport is for. And that is also what Mr. Bach said, that the sport should unify the people and not separate the people. Yeah, and yeah, I do I not want that somebody bring the war into the IPF because mm -hmm. that should not be. Uh, we supporting our friends from Ukraine and uh, they get all support what we can do from our side. And we reject all form of support of a war and mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is not acceptable. And therefore, it makes it then, of course, more difficult to say how we can bring them back when they self, the Federation They're itself, helping themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Helping themselves and say to the people, listen, do not jump into uh, Instagram hates or uh, e Telegram mm -hmm. hates. Uh, please stay out of this and so on. I think they must do something self uh, I agree. Uh, about I agree. it. Yeah. I agree. I That's agree. I'm uh, Justin. Uh, Gaston, I, I just want to change up the topic a little bit because I know it got really like pretty much political there and I know it's sad, but I, I just want to go back to the popularity of powerlifting. Obviously, you've been in the sport for quite a long time, definitely longer than I have. Uh, obviously, I've read up on the history, like, you know, it sort of towards the, st the start of the popularity, it was mostly the single ply, double ply, uh, equip lifting and now it seems to be on the rise is classic so no like 
and with the figures that I saw, I, I, I can't remember the figures off the top of my head, but there are now more less in terms of ratio, less equipped lifters than there are classic lifters or raw lifters. What is your view on that? Because obviously it was going in one direction up to a certain point, And then now it's going to pretty much where it is now, the rise of classic piloting. Like what, what are you doing to like, I don't know, support, I suppose the equip lifting or is, or are you just letting it do its natural course where it's popular here now? Yeah, but uh, I said uh, when we start talking about classic uh, uh, that uh, we cannot just now say, okay, we take the classic in and we kick the equipped out because mm -hmm. we must understand who are the equipped lifters, the most of them. That was the people who started with powerlifting. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, in my heart, it says, I cannot say now, okay, now you have done your job, you can go. That it's not how we should treat our lifters. Yeah. So and that was the reason what I say, okay, let's go the both way. Uh, of course, that we get more classic lifter, it's normal because it costs maybe less money uh, than when you have costumes for the ladies, it's more easier than get pressed in a costume. And so on difficulties we have, uh, and that it's maybe one of the problems why now it is uh, the more and more less people doing equip because we don't get equipment. So mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, people who are telling me I was waiting one year for a costume. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, if that is a problem, then of course we will get a problem in equip lifting. So we mm -hmm. have to send a letter to our uh, manufacturers and say, look, if you cannot anymore provide the equip lifting, then we get in trouble. Because yeah. how we can promote uh, equip lifting when we do not uh, get equipped. And on the yeah. other side, I have co started to combine the meets so that we had like now sub junior equipped and uh, yeah. classic lifters. That's so that, yeah, that you give the possibility to a classic lifter who has maybe be coming to an end and say, okay, I cannot come more forward i am on the 10th place but if i go to equipped i will be maybe on the middle uh, mm -hmm. places that they uh, stay much longer involved in power lifting yeah so, is, uh, is that is that from the uh, what you've been doing with on the bench press only side because i've been to uh, the japan bench press world championships and yeah, you did so, so, you did combine the equipped yeah. and the yeah. raw 1300 lifters yeah get there and uh, uh, if you're looking in bench press, there is still, when you have bench press meet, still much more uh, bench, also uh, equipped lifters than when you're looking in power lifting. Power lifting, mm -hmm. uh, there are less compared to the classic, but in bench press, it was not the same amount, but it was not so far away from the classic. So mm -hmm. that we still have a lot of bench pressers who do equipped and classic. So, and that was uh, my goal because I have never been a lifter, but the mentality, what I saw uh, by normal thinking, when you have a bench shirt on and you saw that the shirt every time more tight and more tight and the yeah. people do it and do it because they want to more kilos. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's, yeah. And I, if I am wrong, you can correct me, but I think that's the mentality of the lifters. And so I thinking when you have classic lifters, they coming to an end, but they see in, in uh, equipped, I can still, uh, reach do goals, it. then they yeah. will do it. Yeah, if okay. they like. So, the power, if they... I'm gonna go back full circle with the whole uh, bench press change rules. Would that also apply to the equipped lifters? Yeah, to everybody. But oh. I can tell. Yeah, but I can tell you that's the same. Now the people talking, 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 do not know what's going on. I have uh, now been in uh, uh, Istanbul where we had the sub junior and junior worlds. 90 to 95 percent of the lifters will not be harmed by these new rule changes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this was one of our discussions we had because, and again, I must say it's not Gaston who changed the rule because I'm not a bench press, I'm not a power lifter, so I am just the president. And I said we have to do something. Then I gave it forward to the coach commission, lifters commission, women's commission, and I just said, bring me a serious change that these small movements are uh, ending, yeah, yeah, stop. So, and they worked something out. And then of course we had a lot of proposals and from this all proposal, there was then also the TC, the technical committee and the executive member who discussed then what could be the best. 
So and I think what we find out is the best and we have pictures and I think pictures say more than English words because the one comes from that nation there. Mm -hmm. the one, I, sometimes I say when we're discussing and the people start about the wording, I said, should we not better do it in my language then maybe everybody understand it than in <laughs> English and everybody has an, an, another interpretation. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, so I, think, that, I think it'll be very interesting when yeah. it's enforced, one, and yeah, two, in January 2023. Yeah, when it's enforced. Yeah. And two, yeah. what the competition and the judging will look like when it's implemented. Because obviously, up, upon the, you know, this, the start of the new rule, there's definitely going to be a lot of like, I don't know, question marks in people's heads because, you know, they, they, they've never been judged in that way before. But yeah. like you said, with the pictures, yeah. hopefully it will be yeah. like perfect. I think the, pic the pictures say more than a word. And if then the people uh, making training and the coach look and see what is on the picture, then he find out that uh, from 100 lifters, maybe 95 must not think about anything and maybe mm -hmm. five need make some changes for the yeah. setup or for the pushing. That's all. Yeah. So it yeah. is not a big issue, and uh, for the referees it should not be a big issue. But we will have an eye on the referees because I do not want any more that referees uh, giving the small finger, and at the end is again the whole hand, and then yeah. we're coming back to what uh, yeah. is not. Yeah. So the pictures are clear enough, and sh everybody should understand it because even if you will not uh, writing any any wordings. The picture will be enough, and that's why I do not want to explain wordings because mm -hmm. I'm not so familiar with that English uh, wordings to explain now what is this. This mm -hmm. I uh, have just advised Honey to send that book. Now he sent it to me today. He must just make one more change uh, concerning the cards in mm -hmm. which number of the card it should be, and mm -hmm. then uh, I assume that before the end of the week that we will publish the book, and then it's done. But I will also say I'm not going in Instagram. I will not jump on anything what is written because <laughs> it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And I just say the people should try uh, uh, before they say anything. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we will see that there will be problems because we are not blind. Yeah. So when we see that there will be problems, we can every time make adjustments. Mm -hmm. Simple like that it is. So, and therefore people should not just jumping on something, have no idea what's going on and just jumping to say something. And the most of them, I am sure it's not even, uh, it's not even uh, people from our federation, it's people from other federations. And yeah. therefore I, I do not jumping on that anything. Gaston, um, on that, on that matter, I know um, you probably, you and your executive team probably took the decision for the good interest of the sports because yeah. we want to move forward. We want the sports to be recognized. Um, on that note, my question is just is, have you, apart from your executive uh, committee and the people that you mentioned there um, um, that did, before the decision was taken, did you speak to any other nations, like the major nations like Britain, France, and the rest? No, we haven't done that because, as I mentioned before, before we had nations who presented rules and they presented often rules in advantage of their lifters. Uh, so oh. that's why we have a rule group. And in this rule group are lifters, lifters commission who self doing powerlifting. And I must say they have done a really good job because they have, it's not just a decision made like this. No, we was working on that for months and uh, mm. looking uh, about it. So uh, there is people, they just on Instagram in few few minutes, they know much better what's going on than the people who was working for months <laughs> on it. So without, that was also the same with the IPFGL points. We have sent it to the university, to specialists to find out what would be the best. But then of course, everybody looked just his, uh, yeah, but then this uh, have a disadvantage and this has a disadvantage, but uh, you must also looking for what are the, uh, the IPF GL points. The mostly of them will be used at the World Games. Mm -hmm. So for the elite, uh, for the elite lifters, no? uh, then of course it can be possible that the master lifter feel that it's not correct with the IPFGL points and so on. But therefore we have specialists uh, who did that. And uh, uh, it was not changed because uh, it was before Wilkes points. 
it has nothing to do with that at all. It was just because I have been told every time these points are not correct, we have to do this and this. And I said, okay, let's uh, have our specialists talking about it. And we uh, have then also the Leipzig University professors who was working on it. So it was not simple, uh, just a decision. It was yeah. really analyzed. And the same is here, Mr. Rule. There's the Lifters Commission who really brought up these pictures to show, to explain, who have self-made tests also to show. Uh, and that it then can of be done. course, yeah. yeah. And of course, the discussion was also to make sure that we not harm too much lifters mm -hmm. because it is not to harm the lifters all. It is just to make sure that everybody has in the future to do a bench press. That's all. That's that is how you compare. Yeah. I know. So I know you can't get into detail, into too yeah. much detail with the rule change and stuff, but could you just answer if, I mean, how, how can I, how can I say this? Would the new rule changes affect, highly affect lifters like Sweden's own Eddie Bergen? So if he was to bench the way he did after the change, would that all be free reds? Uh, I do not know if it will harm Eddie because I have not now the picture in my eyes uh, concerning mm. But I know his uh, sister, for example, that could affect her, his sister. Okay. That I know. Okay. Uh, okay. Eddie, I do not have now the picture. If I would see a picture, then I could tell you, yes, it can affect him as well. Okay. But as I said, we had, for example, looking into our world records from a nine, there was three, it would be affected and six would not be affected. So you can see that we were thinking on everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And then of no, course, course, when we will see now that these world records who have been done cannot more be reached because uh, people was not pushing that much, we will first have a look on it. And when we see, okay, it, they are now too far away from that, mm -hmm. then we will also making standards up, but just for those who get affected, uh, standards on these world records. Okay, Gaston, I have actually, Last two questions, and I, ho I hope uh, it's, it's, it's fair questions. So first question is, would the world records in bench press be uh, affected in the sense that it, will have, it has to be reset? I, I, I am not sure, but as I said now, we will have a look on it. Mm -hmm. If you have a lifter who just push like this, mm -hmm. and after he must push much more, and he cannot, and nobody can more reaching the records who have been set by this, then mm -hmm. of course we oh, will, uh, okay. yeah. Then of course we will make a new standard. Okay. But we we are looking now first all because most of the records, as I said, from nine records we have checked six records. It's uh, okay. Has have been done by lifters who will not uh, have any problems with the new rules, and three was uh, from people who uh, set these records who have a problem with the new okay. so, and my so there my could my potentially second... be free records. So sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, Joey. So there could potentially be free records that could be wiped out. Yeah, when we see now at the competition with the new rules and we see now effective, the best lifters are now far away from that. Mm -hmm. Then we will uh, have a meeting together and say, okay, here is now the analyze of these lifters. So they are so far away from these world records that we then uh, make a decision and then uh, asking the coaches and the lifter what can be the standard, new standards. And then oh, we will, okay. of course, uh, setting new standards, but not for all, just where it will yeah, be affected yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. so and we will not start again with new weight classes just yeah. to get new standards no we will adopt standards from the existing uh, okay. world records so i guess on my second question actually is i know you know we're lucky to have you here and this i believe this is like the first podcast you've ever been on would it be too much to ask if you could send us these pictures that uh the the rule changes are going to be like <laughs> If you're waiting two, three days, you will get the pictures in the world. Oh, but what was so sort of dying to know? And like, the, the, podcast, the podcast is not going to be out until like, you know, what a few you, days. Like, what if you was to show us a little sneak peek? Uh, yeah, or what yeah, if yeah. you was to do it yourself? Yeah, no, well, look, it is easy. I told you now at the most of the lifters has had no problems. Just look uh, the last competition and yeah. you'll find self out uh, what will be the most of the lifters. Okay. I can't have an idea, but I, can't, I don't want to. <laughs> we, 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 we'll protect their identity. You know, um, uh, somebody asked me a question when I said we will change the rule and I just gave my opinion. But as I am not the decision maker, up the shitstorm started. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah president won't have flat. 
But that was just <laughs> an idea because I started in 86 and it was flat and we had never a discussion. So yeah, that yeah, was yeah. why I said, if I have to say something, we could also say flat. Mm, yeah. But yeah, yeah. it yeah. is not my decision because I said, we have a coach commission, we have a lifters commission, yeah. we have a women's commission. I want that they make proposals. And that is then based on this proposal. We have made a discussion. And this is uh, what I can say also, since I leading this federation, we have good transparency and good governance. Mm -hmm. And I have made sure that the commissions who was there are involved in decisions because that's why we have commissions. If we have commissions and you never contact them, you never ask them for something, you not bring them there, then they just say, for what we are here. Mm -hmm. And uh, exactly. things like that, these are the matters uh, what uh, you give them also, an, uh, how you say that, uh, uh, a duty to do and an, um, uh, I don't find now the word in English. What's the word in French? Uh, Jurors can translate. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 uh, they give an, um, uh, ah, if I find the word, I will tell you. So, so yeah. the, uh, they, they, uh, that uh, that they self must make decisions. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, how you can say that? Uh, you give them and uh, so but you have to empower your people. You say just what you're saying. Yeah, empower yeah. them to make the decisions. Not just yeah. everything is coming yeah, from yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you give them you give them a responsibility. That was the yeah. Ah, okay. 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 You Great. give them a responsibility, and so the responsibility yeah. is not all on the shoulders of the president, but on the commissions and so on. And mm. that is what I want to say. We are a federation with a very good governance and uh, transparency, and not any decision. And when I say not any decision is made by Gaston itself. Mm -hmm. And this is then again when people starting talking and talking and blaming Gaston, they have no idea. But not mm -hmm. any decision what is made is made by Gaston. And it means not when Gaston has ideas and bring that up and the people say, okay, it is a good idea and they accept it, that that is then uh, a dictator. I thinking <laughs> and I talking with people and all my ideas, what I have is not every time coming from myself. It's <laughs> coming also because I talking to the lifters, I talking to coaches. So, and this is when you talk to the people, you get also some ideas. And when somebody bring an idea, what I say, oh yeah, he is right uh, or she is right. That is a good idea. Uh, and we have then a discussion, then I bring ideas like that up. So, and, and that has nothing to do with dictator just because you have the ideas because somebody must have the ideas. And mm -hmm. if it is the person who lead the sport, yeah, mm -hmm. that's why he lead the sport yeah. to come mm -hmm. up with the idea, to have uh, a future. I looking not just from here to there, I looking far away. So for the future, and this mm -hmm. is uh, uh, how it works. And uh, yeah. of course, uh, when we want to be a recognized sport, then we have to work like sports because I cannot understand, for example, when people say, why I cannot compete there and there and there. Yeah, on one side, the, the same people say, you must fight against stopping what we already do. But mm -hmm. if then is somebody positive, he go to another federation. I do not say any names here because for me, it doesn't matter what they do, but they running there. And then our lifters want to run there for making a competition. Yeah. Then I say, yeah, that makes no sense for when we kick the people out to make sure that we have clean lifters, why you must then running behind lifters who are suspended and going to another federation. Mm -hmm. And for me, this federation are just federation, but not official because it's just existing one official federation and it's one official federation who follow the IOC uh, requirements and the, the, the IOC mm -hmm. uh, 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 requests. And that's we, and we are the only one who are recognized by the GIVES, by the AIMS, by the IWGA, by the FISU. And that is the way you must go to have a chance to get an IOC recognized sport. So uh, we sure. do that in the uh, good will to bring our sport forward. And this is my goal. People lift mm -hmm. us going to championships to get the medal. My goal is when we received the IOC recognition that I can say, look, I have done something I have done already a lot for our lifters, but I can say, look, here is the day that would be for me the happiest day in my life when I can say we have now reached this goal. Yeah. And it is what we are working for, but it is not for myself, it is for the lifters. And I have been always there for our lifters and I protected 
also some lifters where I made sure from lifters who has been suspended that uh, they at the end could compete again because it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said when I became the president, I am the president for the lifters. Yeah. So and in this way, I working to bring our sport forward, to make our lifters the stars, to get Arnold's where some prize money next year for UK Sheffield and other one. A dream, uh, what I had, that a, a lot of lifters get the chance to get uh, big money there. So uh, this is uh, the dream I have. And also when I see our world championships, now all these close fights, especially mm -hmm. in, in the classic where it's very close fights, uh, that is fantastic. That makes the sport exciting. Yeah, that is definitely. What we need. Yeah. I, as, a, as a lifter in the IPF and watching yeah. the high level lifters, it's definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely more, like just something to watch, basically. Yeah. And this is uh, what I like. Uh, and then uh, when we reach this goal, then uh, we also, when we have oil sport, even oil sport, they are very happy and excited about our sport. And that uh, means something. Mm -hmm. And this is the most important. And, uh, but the people must help going this way. And that is what I say that it makes no sense every time on Instagram talking bad, Special our lifters should not talk bad. Mm -hmm. If I go, if I go somewhere and the transport was not working, often it is then not only the mistake of the organizer, but also the mistake of the team itself. Mm -hmm. And then I just writing in the Facebook, ah, I was there, the transport is not working. No, you must come back and speak about what you have done, what, uh, 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 how many kilos you was doing in your total, the fight you have mm -hmm. had with somebody. That is what you should bring the news to the mm -hmm. happiness you had at the championship. Yeah. To promote I because, yourself. Yeah. I think it's because a lot of people tend to think of the negatives more than anything. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people, there's, they always, that's what they focus on more than anything. Like they focus on the negatives yeah. as opposed to the positives. Yeah. And that's of anything in life, in all honesty. Yeah. So but when it's you, just when one of you, those things. Yeah, yeah. But when you're looking uh, our posts, the videos from the lifters, what they do, they get much more likes than if somebody writes something negative. And it's mostly every time the same people. Uh, so yeah. that's not, they get not that much. Uh, people mm -hmm. following them uh, for what they are writing down. So uh, mm -hmm. I am yeah. one, of, one of them who not follow what they say because it makes no sense. I uh, like discussing with people like you here uh, where we can have a nice discussion explaining mm -hmm. this is uh, what brings sport forward and not just talking yeah. things what that makes no sense. Yeah, I agree, Gaston. Okay. Gaston, um, I would just, uh, me, I've just got two questions for me before we end. I know um, the timing, I'm conscious of the time as well. You mentioned, I think you touched down on it as well in the beginning about the women wear classes because this question is coming across right, a lot of yeah. time. And you probably in the gene, you explain to someone why, why should we not or why should we? Is it, can you give us here a little bit of a clarity yeah. why we have 84 and 84 plus where there's not another weight class in the middle? Yeah. Okay, first of all, uh, we had every time one weight class less than the men's and we said, okay, we will have equal rights for men and women, so we have to add a class. Mm -hmm. So uh, there could be a decision and say, okay, we take one class off from the men, then we have seven and seven, or we add a class for the women and 90 plus. Uh, per example, or a 90 kilo and a 100 kilo. Uh, but we discussed this also with the women commission, of course, because it affects the women. Uh, and uh, we came then to the point from the lifters commission, the women's commission, that it is much better from the 63 to the 75 in the middle, where we had much more uh, difference than in between the other small classes to add than the the, the the new class is 69 and the 73 instead 76. of uh, uh, 76 sorry to have then uh, instead to say now we just add one uh, class at the end mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that was the majority uh, people who wanted this and it shows us also when you are looking that on these two new classes we have a lot of lifters in the big classes we have not that many lifters so, mm -hmm. and then uh, if you would say now, okay, we have, I can understand if somebody has 84.5 and there is a woman from 140 kilo, that this is a big difference, of course, but 
it would still be a big difference if you have a 90 plus or a 100 plus. Yeah. Uh, then it's still a difference. So also for the men, if you're looking the men 100 plus and you have somebody for 160 kilo, there's the same discussion. Mm, so yeah. then you should have for every 10 classes another class and then how many classes we would have. And on the other point, that is also uh, special when you're looking for the young lifters, sub junior and junior. Uh, there we have lost uh, still in the small class 43, what mm -hmm. we have taken off by the, the See, open, open classes. Yeah, uh, because there was mainly just Japanese lifter. So that was then a reason why we said, okay, this small class we can take away. And then we put the 69 and the 76. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, yeah, and then uh, it's also not good to say then uh, to have a junior lifter or sub junior lifter in big classes. Yeah, because that would also not be healthy for the these young people. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's all the discussion. Yeah, these are all discussions. What's going then on? And then at the end, uh, we have to make a decision. But uh, it is you can see now what I explain you that we are thinking about all. It's mm -hmm. not just we put something in and it's done. No, we thinking, mm -hmm. we discussing, and that it's also not done in 10 minutes. That is, okay, we have this and this, think about it. And then we have a meeting and then we talk. And then somebody bring up this. And then, ah, oh, yeah, I was not thinking on that. Yeah, that's a good idea, so on. Mm -hmm. So are the discussion going on? And that's how we make then changes or bringing in weight loss. Mm -hmm. If you can see that now somebody who left us has go, gone back again to the old, uh, mm -hmm. classes so you see the people thinking the one thinking like this the other thinking like that yeah uh, so okay. it doesn't so, matter what you do is every time somebody who feel maybe uh, uh, not comfortable but the irish uh, woman who, who was bringing up that question at the end she said oh, yeah i understand so yeah, she yeah, understood. Yeah. even uh, us here I, I, we uh, could agree that yeah. you would mm -hmm. understand now because yeah. again outside being i'm not we're not part, uh, part of your, your your community team but outside we were always wondering yeah, why yeah. there's no way class in the big ladies but you explain yeah. it like that yeah. it makes sense why yeah. we're having yeah. the way classes below uh, my very last question gaston is so i know we've come from really far to where we are so this is literally i'm asking this personally don't look up what the media is saying what the uh, view we're having or what the numbers are yourself as an as a president as an individual where do you see us going in terms of uh, IP, uh, yeah. powerlifting yeah also still what i said uh, the first and uh, the major goal is the ioc recognition because that's the most important uh, goal for us because that opens us other doors as well. And then of course, uh, you when you open some doors, then you also get a chance uh, to do more and more uh, things for powerlifting. We have now uh, engaged uh, Dietmar Wolf as main coach in the IPF, who uh, start now doing education. That means we want to have also in the future that all head coach must have a certificate or it is a national certificate. And if nations are there who cannot uh, 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 get any certificate at home because Ministry of Sport or nobody offer this at mm -hmm. their home, then we going there from the IPS and offer a basic coaching clinic where they get then a certificate for the basic. basic. And still we have then also our level two uh, level certificate level and a level one. The level one we have not yet started, but that it's all in progress for the future to make also sure that for the education, uh, this is something very important, especially when you see coaches coming with lifters, uh, they just helping them, they are happy when the lifter makes something good, but when you travel, for example, with sub juniors, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility because if yeah. something happened to a sub junior and the parents are not there and they trust mm -hmm. in the coach, then the coach yeah. must know what is his responsibilities. So yeah. all these things is uh, we want to become much more professional everywhere. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is what the, the chance we will offer. And that is also why we have a long term uh, contract with SPD and ELICO. And I must say, really, they supporting us because they see what we are doing. Mm -hmm. They follow up what we are doing. And when we talk with them, 
about sponsorship, then of course we explain in them what are our goals and they say, yes, that is very important. That's a very uh, good way. We saw what you have done until now and we mm -hmm. see your plans for the future. That's why we are supporting you. So mm -hmm. that is also something often the people say the IPF, the money in the pocket. In the IPF, nothing is in the pocket. It's all on our webpage. You go to our webpage, you see the agenda, you see all the financial expenses and the incomes and the expenses. So all is transparent. And mm -hmm. what, what, when we get more money, we do more. And that is one of the goals uh, that we have now reached is to have Eurosport because Eurosport not coming to us like in soccer, free. In soccer, <laughs> they have to pay, but we have to pay Eurosport. Yeah, but yeah. it is for us important to make the sport popular. And then I think that money is very well invested. Yes, when, yeah. With it's this, we investment. can make up exactly when we can our sport making more popular and that also will bring to a point that we get now more and more members mm -hmm. uh, before we was looking to find members now the people coming from self because they see mm -hmm. the yeah. and they, uh, what we must do to become an ipf member and so on and that it's uh, with the popularity and of course the main goal is that uh, my wish is that all our lifters uh, that like in a soccer, everybody knows uh, who is this, who is this guy. Mm -hmm. I wish me also for the powerlifters uh, who are long time uh, in and good uh, stars, like I call yeah. them, that the people also outside of the, our sport know, wow, oh, ah, he is the big lifter who do this and this and this. Yeah. So and this, uh, and this popularity you can reach with your sport and with mm -hmm. our streaming. So these mm -hmm. are all the goals what we have uh, to do for the future. So it's a lot to do. We just uh, must make sure that also our member federations must follow what we do. Yeah. Because yeah. that is the other point. Uh, IPF is not Gaston. Yeah. IPF <laughs> means all our member federations. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and if we have a uh, following of the IOC requirements, that means also our federation must follow the requirements. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they come when we will be recognized. I say, when you all do your job, yeah. then we will be recognized. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not easy. It's so not it's, easy. It's, yeah. it's a it's a relationship basically. Like, yeah, yeah, of as course. Long, as long as you do your part we'll, and we do our part, then yeah, it will move forward. We're doing our side and we open the doors for the federation. And then, like uh, with the university, I'm a little bit disappointed because we have now it's not bad, but we have only 126 lifters for the university cup. Mm -hmm. We have 18 nations. What is not bad? but we could have more nations. And th that is, again, uh, I opened the door. I speaking science three years here and there. So we should have the FISU Cup. Unfortunately, it has been withdrawn from Moscow and we couldn't find another university so far uh, so that we offered them the FISU, okay. Uh, we do not once now say we do nothing. So can we organize the university cup like we did before? under your patronage just for this year until uh, the FISU self can organize it and they was in agreement and I got also messages from the FISU that uh, two of them will join uh, this championship so what is great for us uh, they are already happy because they have already followed our university cups from before and uh, one day they ask have you so many men a uh, woman than men and I remember in Estonia we had even one woman more than men and I said, well, yeah, we had one woman more than men. Wow, that's fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and these are all things, you, but you see how important it is on what these people think. Yeah. Thinking yeah, on yeah. all, and we do all uh, to make mm. the sport equal for everybody. Uh, and this is uh, the goals we have to bond, but the federations need follow. Yeah. Then mm. when the federations follow, then we can reach uh, much more goals. And yeah, pressure, making pressure left and right uh, that we get uh, accepted as an IOC I sport. Yeah. I agree. Thank you very much, um, Dustin. I think that's um, exhausted my questions there. I don't know if you guys have any more questions. I am honestly, yeah, I, I've already asked. My we've question. we've covered everything. Honestly, there is one question that I did want to ask actually because I wanted to find out. I don't know if this was already posted somewhere, but I haven't seen it, or I don't know what happened, but. The juniors, the junior competition, the junior world, sorry, that was supposed to be in Ecuador, correct? Yes, yes, yes. What happened with that? How come they got changed last minute? Yeah, they have a new president and then they have uh, problems because of the pandemic and the new government. And then, of course, the new government give, has not given them the funds what they uh, expected. And so they had no chance to organize it. 
Mm. So, uh, and, and okay. I'm, yeah, I must also say uh, now we have been in Turkey and that was the first time that they has organized something. Of course, it was not all 100% perfect, but uh, for the first time that they organized, I think it was very good organized except some uh, problems what we discussed already then with them to do it better the president from the turkish federation is a very nice and polite person every time we say oh i'm sorry but when i said we need now this okay and he did all so uh, and then of course you have people going home yeah they're here and there uh, like i said they got a letter uh, from from a coach who claimed then uh, the, about the uh, restrooms was stinking, but he uh, it, it it was true. But the problem is why it stinks. Because, <laughs> because uh, why it's yeah no because the people also who go to the toilet. Some people uh, put just something in the things, and then of course uh, after somebody has uh, put an injection in the toilet. So uh, that, that that's also the behavior. It's not just uh, must give the fault to organize. Yeah, uh, we had also on the floor, there was sitting one day on the floor, there was about 20 bottles on the floor, empty bottles Whoa. in the venue. Then I said, listen, uh, uh, I uh, hope you appreciate what the loaders are doing. And they, yes, yes, yes. I said, okay, why you make them sure that these people must, after taking your trash away, after yeah. a long day charging here, and they must stand cleaning up the room because you not put your bottles in the trash. And mm. people was clapping their hand. And that is what I say again when we're speaking about coaches and teaching. The mm -hmm. coaches have also to teach the liver how they yeah. uh, must, uh, because you. I said, what would we do if you coming to the platform and I put you 20 bottles on the plot? <laughs> The trash. No, it's, no, it's something. Lift. Yeah, it, it's a pity that you must tell the people this. That, that should be normal that you not put all on the floor. Yeah, it's it's, uh, uh, it's, it's that uh, accountability from yeah. uh, for the lifters and the yeah. people uh, yeah. watching. But yeah, and uh, then uh, then uh, it's easy to criticize an organizer, but on, instead to criticize, we self see what's not working and we see that we see some also things what other people not see and we mm -hmm. sit with the organizer and we say okay listen this uh, the first banquet per example was a banquet with cocktail it was just 15 euros but it was not that what i expected and i saw that also from the first the equip lifters when they left the, the whole cocktail was there and it was nothing so i said to him listen we have now another banquet for the classic i want to have a real dinner Mm -hmm. So, and he said, mm -hmm. okay, I apologize. And he made it. So mm -hmm. uh, he was willing to do that. And it was for 15 euros, he could ask him 35, like all the others. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is the first time that he did it. And so the first banquet was not what we expected. The second was then good. So mm -hmm. because was that, he- Was that he, the he, one, he, was that the one that you attended and had a little dance? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think, I think, I think <laughs> to me, I believe um Gaston, if I must say the banquet in South Africa was the best ever. You know, oh, the... oh, you have been on a lot of banquets. We had a, had a lot of very nice. Also, I remember one in Ukraine, uh in Mariupol, where we had a nice banquet. Uh the hotels was also there, not perfect, but the banquets uh, that was really uh, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, we had a lot of good bang in Lithuania. We had a fantastic bang at, uh, uh, we have had a, a lot of good bang at. It depends also uh, if lifters uh, really uh, want and enjoy and you, that's why I often stand up and sing the song, Hey baby, that the st yeah. party start. And when yeah. it started, then it's done. Uh, so, but sometimes you need somebody who take action that the people yeah. then uh, stand up and do something. Yes. And I enjoy, of course, because if you have a long week like we had from the morning 6 to the night 11, 12, uh, then, of course, uh, it's a hard nine hard days and you have a banquet that it's then where you say, OK, now it's time to relax and then yeah. you enjoy yeah. with the lifters. Yeah. Well, do you reckon there's a chance we could have a, a mini banquet after the Arnold's? Uh, I do not know. I have never <laughs> been there. What they have organized last no, time. No, no, it's, it's yeah. okay, Gaston. No, no, it was. But it was I, just. I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah. I think when. Well, I do not know if the people are all in the same hotel or not. Uh, I know that we at the World Games organize every time our own banquet because when you are in the beginning, 
you will not be at the big banquet from the World Games. If you are in the middle, you have no banquet. So we organized every time our banquet mm. self. Uh, I haven't, uh, but I can ask uh, Emmanuel if there has been something organized last time or not. It's a good idea. Yeah. To yeah. It will be brilliant take... because we have got enough lifted yeah. for a banquet because when yeah. you think yeah. about it, 20, 20, 40 and all of that, we yeah. have, we'll have it easily, we can have 150, 200 people. So yeah, why yeah. not? So, no, yes, yeah. as I said, I always listen when people say something, I can bring that up and say, Emmanuel, okay, if it is not more possible for this time, but then for next year, next we time. can yeah. take in, in consideration and organize ourselves something. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Gaston, Gaston, so Joe is a very good organizer as well, so he'll be able to <laughs> find location. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need anything? Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, Gaston, uh, thank you very much, literally, um, for your timing. I know you're a busy man, but you still accorded us an hour or so um, today. Literally, we can't thank you enough. Thank yeah, you honestly, very much. Gaston, yeah. thank you for, I know, like I said, this is the first podcast that you've been on. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you, you know, got to say everything that you needed to say, wanted to say, and yeah, that it was all good for you. Yeah. And I before just, you do uh, go, and before you do go, is there a last message that you want to give to all of the haters that are throwing you messages in your Instagram? Just give them a message, guys. This yeah. is your stage now. Go uh, for first, yeah. First, I want to say concerning other federations, I not care what other federations do, and I let them do, and I just say. I stay out of your federation, you stay out of our federations. Yeah. If you want to do this, I wish everybody good luck. Also the USAPL, it is for me a pity that they are not more with us. Uh, and it's not that it was a, an easy decision, but I, ha when I was finished at the Congress, I said to Larry, I wish you all the best that the goals you want to in USAPL, you can reach that goal. So I do not speak bad about them. I just say, if you want to be you as a pair lifter, take care about you as a well, but stay out of the IPF and not try always blaming the IPS because we are also not trying to blame the US APL or whoever. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one message. And to the people who are writing every time things without knowing what's going on, if you want to know something, you should talk to the people on a good way, a normal way in respect. And uh, mm -hmm. I respect everybody's opinion Everybody mm -hmm. can have a different opinion, otherwise it would be not interesting if everybody has the same opinion, because mm -hmm. with opinions, sharing opinions, you can bring sport also forward. If yes. you have just people who every time shaking the head and say, yes, 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 mm -hmm. then uh, it's not interesting. But if you have people who really say, yeah, but Gaston, I think in this or this or this, then you ideas coming up and with these ideas, you can move forward. So uh, that is much better than just uh, writing uh, bad messages on Instagram. In any mm -hmm. case, I don't read it. Sometimes people send it to me and I just say, don't uh, care about it because if you put oil on the fire, they will go forward. And yeah, if you don't put course. oil on the fire, it closed from so well That's yeah, the best way true. to do it. Yeah. And, and that's all. And uh, I wish these people will come one day to the IPF and see what is the difference between the IPF and there, and then maybe uh, they will change the mind. And if not, I wish them good luck in their federation, and that's all. But yeah. keep out from the IPF. <laughs> okay, it's true. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, Gaston, uh, yourself, is there any way people can contact you? Because after we drop this podcast, we're probably going to get questions. Uh, probably people are trying to ask you questions as well personally to get clarification about a few things because again you come across a really approachable person and not a lot of people have sensed that and not a lot of people have probably know that but now people will know that is there any way people can contact you is he instagram facebook or yeah. phone number or whatever your okay. private number yeah. house yeah. number <laughs> <laughs> no i say every time when I am somewhere at the world and somebody come to me in the evening mm. when there is nothing to do, everybody is welcome. Like we have now with the ladies from Ireland uh, mm. waiting for the bus, had a good talk. I'm willing mm. to talk to people, but I mm. cannot now starting and say, okay, you have a question, send it to me because oh, yeah. I already get, get too much questions sometimes. <laughs> and often it is questioned what you can easily find on our webpage. That's mm. the other problem that the people uh, should go first on our webpage most mm -hmm. things are explained there 
mm. somebody sent me a message. Yeah, when is the when is the bus going? I said, listen, I am not the the, the person who organized <laughs> the transport, or I'm not organizer for the hotel and so on, or sending me for a visa request, and I say. Yeah, I cannot give you an invitation for the visa because I'm not the organizer. I cannot, from Luxembourg County, give somebody a visa to go to Denmark or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes questions like that come up. And if I would say, no, everybody can send me a question, then, of course, uh, I, cannot oh, yeah. even, uh, uh, yeah. I cannot even answer all these questions because <laughs> I have already uh, a lot of emails to answer per yeah. day. But yeah. everybody is always welcome when I meet them at the championships. And as a question, I voluntarily talk to the people. It's even better when you can talk face to face, face to, to people. Face. Yeah. yeah. So that being said, Gaston, thank you so much. We're definitely going to see you in Birmingham for the Arnold's UK. So if I do have any more questions, I hope you'd be yeah. more than happy to uh, accommodate me or Alex or Jurids because we're all going to be there. So definitely can't wait to see you then. Thank yeah. you, sir. Th th yeah. Thank you also very much for you. It was interesting for me to talk with you. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I could give you good information that you can understand much better what's going on in the IPF and how difficult it is uh, and not uh, so easy to do all this uh, work. And uh, what about somebody has to think? Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just about the rule book and so on. It's a lot much more. Uh, mm -hmm. what's going on to bring a to lead a federation of course mm -hmm. yeah. i agree thank you sir thank, thank you have thank a you. very good, good evening sir thank, thank you so much bye thank you thank all. you, thank you.